Good day, beloved. In our last video, we saw how the Huns led by Attila fell like a star upon a third part of the Roman Empire. In this video, we will now be looking at the fourth trumpet. Subscribe to my channel for more Bible-based content and click on that bell icon so you will get notified when part five comes out. Let us begin. First off, we will begin with the book of Revelation chapter 8 and verse 12, and this is what it says. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them were, was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. Now we don't have a lot to cover here, so let's see what the sun, moon, and stars are. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 16. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. The sun and moon rule the day and night. The sun, moon, and stars may also symbolize the light of truth and its various manifestations. The pure church is clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and she has a crown of 12 stars, according to the book of Revelation in chapter 12. In this trumpet, the sun, moon, and stars evidently refer to something evil, because God sends this judgment upon them. This fourth and final affliction on western Rome completes the set of afflicted things, the total creation, the earth, the sea, the rivers and fountains of water, and the sun, moon, and stars. Let's look at the book of Revelation, chapter 14, and verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And once again, it's on a third part of Rome. And I know this is probably common sense, right? But then again, common sense is pretty much dead nowadays. But what exactly is a day? Because it says the day show not a part of it. A day is indeed a period of time. So let's look more into this. Let's look at the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verses 1 through 3. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, and the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease, because they are few, and those that look out of the windows be darkened. The days when the sun, moon, and stars don't shine are evil. As apostate Rome had virtually extinguished the light of truth, so the ruling powers in western Rome, of which there were exactly three, the emperor, consuls, and senate, were successively extinguished. The fall of western Rome is dated when the last emperor of the west resigned and Odoacer, king of the Heruli, became the first barbarian to reign in Italy. The consul and the senate lingered a few more years before disappearing. The emperors in the east continued, but the sun, moon, and stars in the west, which had smitten God's people, were gone along with the western empire. Let's look at the book of Psalm chapter 121 and verse 6 real quick. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Incidentally, as the sun, moon, and stars represent all the ruling lights of day and night, so western Rome had three ruling powers in government at the time of this trumpet, and all three disappeared in their order. Sun, moon, and then stars. Odoacer was the first barbarian who reigned in Italy over a people who had once asserted their just superiority over the rest of mankind. The disgrace of the Romans still excites our respectful compassion. The apostates did not learn the lesson 
Following the fall of Western Rome, the church would become even more corrupt. Not just one third of the light of truth would be darkened, but almost all in the spiritual night of the dark ages. Go to the book of Revelation chapter 8 and verse 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Things are about to get a little dicey, as if the first four weren't bad enough for this empire. Some manuscripts say eagle flying, an eagle-faced angel, Let's read the book of Hosea, chapter 8, and verse 1. It says, Set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. The last three trumpets are called woes and describe punishments upon the professedly Christian but apostate Roman Empire in the East. At this time, Rome still refuses to repent, so now must come a fifth trumpet, or the first woe upon them. Until next time, this is John Tesla with Everlasting Rock Ministries, and always remember, the truth never fails. God bless you.